What's the connection between autism and gender identity? Stay tuned. It's no secret that gender has been a big topic in the news lately, especially among policymakers who really, really seem to want to know what's in your pants for some reason. While there's a lot of noise about this topic from a neurotypical perspective, nobody seems to be talking about this through a lens of neurodiversity, and autistic people in particular may have unique perspectives and be disproportionately affected by these conversations. A lot of people have asked us to cover this topic, so that's what we're exploring today. Rather than just talking about our opinions, we're going to focus on the empirical scientific research on the topic. First, I'll give a super short overview of gender identity, then we'll look at some of the evidence that gender expression is different in autistic people and why. Your identity is something that develops throughout your life. Biological processes unfold over time and they're highly variable, and they don't always go the same way. Now that's a feature, not a bug, since the survival of our species depends on variability within the population. So if we ask what makes you a man or a woman, there are a number of developmental markers that we could look at at different time points, and they don't always give the same answer. Chromosomes, genitals, hormones, brain, behavior. You can think of all of these biological and social inputs going into a mixing board, and gender is the output that comes out the other side. And we could say people with XY chromosomes are men and XX are women. But there are plenty of cases where someone that has genes on these chromosomes that cause development of male genitals in XX individuals, or a uterus and fallopian tubes in XY individuals, and some people have both XX and XY cells in their body. Hormones vary across individuals and can turn genes on and off, creating differences as well. So are you your body or are you your brain? Your brain continues to develop and change throughout your life, influenced by both your biological development and your experiences in the world. So do we look at your behavior to determine gender? Someone who likes pink and plays with dolls and wears dresses might be a woman, but all of those gendered activities are deemed so through cultural norms. The point is, none of these categorization schemes provide sufficient and necessary criteria for determining someone's gender identity. But I find that if I ask someone, they can usually tell me what I need to know. So what does autism have to do with gender identity? Well, there are a number of possibilities. For one, if gender is a social construct and autism is characterized primarily by atypical social function, then it makes total sense for autistic people to develop atypical gender identity. Also, it's common for autistic individuals to experience things like alexithymia, a difficulty identifying internal states such as emotions or physiological needs like hunger or sleepiness. So asking an autistic person if they feel like a certain gender may be difficult since the idea that a gender feels any one way in particular is completely foreign. For example, Kinnaird and colleagues published a paper in 2019 where they asked a sample of autistic adults who were raised as female to describe their experience of gender. This was a small qualitative study and they only interviewed 21 people, but all 21 reported that they didn't relate to the typical presentation of female gender. More than a third described themselves as relating to both genders or being fluid, not really wanting to be either gender or enjoying activities of both genders and having a sense of identity based around their interests rather than gender per se. For many participants, having to perform gender was exhausting for them. Another thought that I had about this was that autistic people are often othered and forced to live on the social fringes, which might push them to be more open to questioning the status quo, seeing things as they should be rather than as they are. If that's true, then an autistic person would be more likely to entertain the idea that they don't fit into the typical category, or that the categories are arbitrary and largely unimportant to daily life, and therefore be more likely to non-conform or even opt out of the gender game. Evidence for this idea is currently hard to come by, although there is some mixed research showing that autistic individuals are more resistant to social conformity in certain situations. Some people have even suggested the existence of a gender identity specific to autism called autigender. People who identify this way say it's difficult to separate their gender from their unique autistic understanding of themselves. Currently, this idea has not caught on in the scientific literature, and I couldn't find much research on autigender identities. I'll keep you posted on new developments, but you have to subscribe. There's another way we can approach the question of autism and gender 
through another disorder, gender dysphoria. Now let me be clear, you can have a gender identity that doesn't conform to social norms or differs from the sex assigned to you at birth and have no dysphoria or any kind of disorder associated with it whatsoever. But because of social pressures, there are many gender non-conforming people who do experience something called gender dysphoria. Now that's a sense of unease that a person may have because of a mismatch between their biological sex and their gender identity, which causes things like depression or anxiety that can interfere with daily life. If autism is associated with differences in gender expression, would we see higher rates of gender dysphoria among autistic individuals? Or maybe we might see higher rates of autistic traits in those diagnosed with gender dysphoria? The short answer is yes. But there's some nuance here. Nuance. Studies that have looked at clinical patients experiencing gender dysphoria have shown significantly higher autistic traits compared to the general population. Now, it's important to note that autistic traits are not the same as autism spectrum disorder, and some critics have suggested the autistic traits observed could also be brought about through social exclusion, trauma, depression, and things like that brought about by being gender nonconforming. In a recent meta-analysis of the literature on gender dysphoria and autism, uh, Kalitsunaki and Williams, 2022, combined the results of dozens of studies to see if there was a connection. Within studies of the general population, they found that people higher in autistic traits reported higher feelings of gender dysphoria, even if they were never clinically diagnosed with either condition. And this finding has been repeated and replicated several times. In studies with autistic individuals, there were studies with both adults and children showing over twice the likelihood of wishing to be the gender opposite the birth assigned sex. The one study looking specifically at comorbidity of the clinical disorders showed that autistic people were four times more likely than a general population to also have a gender dysphoria diagnosis. And another study showed that the parents of autistic children reported higher gender variance than non-ASD kids. Two studies showed rates of trans and non-binary identities among diagnosed autistics at just over 15%. That's substantially higher than the general population, currently around 1.6% in the U.S., 5% for adults under 30. From the other side, patients with gender dysphoria do seem to report higher rates of autism diagnoses as well, but it's a little harder to interpret due to some methodological inconsistency, and the reported numbers are all over the place, ranging from about 3%, which is still higher than the general population, to over 80%. So it's hard to say what the real number is with confidence. Overall, the meta-analysis found that there's almost no chance that there isn't a link between autism and gender dysphoria, but more research needs to be done to help us understand the connection. Those are the main lines of research on autism and gender to date. Both of these areas are thriving and hot topics for researchers, so I imagine there will be a lot more to come in the near future. If you found this video helpful, hit the like button, subscribe to get more videos on autism and neurodiversity or psychology in general, and until next time, Keep thinking. Oh, what's that, Senator? You want to see what's in my pants? Hold on, let me get it for you.